Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we will be benchmarking the Gigabyte RX 6800 Aorus Master against five other graphics cards that I have currently on hand, which are the Sapphire RX 6800, the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Eagle OC, the Gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti Aorus Master, the Gigabyte RX 2080 Ti Aorus Extreme, and the NVIDIA GTX 1070 Founders Edition. To perform the benchmarks, we have the following components configured for the test bench. The system was configured with the following settings to ensure that the tests are fair and unbiased. XMP enabled, which means that the memory runs at the intended 3200 MHz supported. All the GPUs were plugged directly into the motherboard with the PCIe BIOS set to auto. The graphics card were running the latest driver versions at the time of the test. Both NVIDIA DLSS and AMD Fidelity FX were not enabled during the tests. None of the newer features like Smart Access Memory or SAM for short were enabled during the tests. Big shout out to NVX System Integrators PTE Limited for supplying the graphics card to do the testing with and some additional supporting hardware. The first test run using 3D Mark was TimeSpy, which is a DirectX 12 benchmark for gaming PCs. The results are interesting as the RX 6800 Aorus Master comes in second next to the RTX 3080. The RX 6800 Aorus Master performance is about 8.5% behind the RTX 3080, but is ahead of all other cards in the list. It clearly leads over the last gen leader being the RTX 2080 Ti and also defeats the RTX 3060 Ti. Next up, we have Port Royal, which is a DirectX 12 real-time ray tracing benchmark. In this test, the RTX 3080 leads by almost 30% over the RX 6800 Aorus Master. The RTX 2080 Ti also leads by about 17%. Next, we have Firestrike Extreme, which is a DirectX 11 benchmark for gaming PCs. The results here are very interesting as the RX 6800 Aorus Master leads the pack. It defeats the RTX 3080 by almost 8%. The RX 6800 reference card is also ahead of the RTX 3080, but is trailing slightly behind the RX 6800 Aorus Master. Next, we have Firestrike, which is another DirectX 11 benchmark for gaming PCs. Again, the RX 6800 Aorus Master leads the pack this time by slightly over 10% over the RTX 3080. The RX 6800 reference card trails slightly but again is ahead of the RTX 3080. Next, we go into the benchmarks by Unigine. First on the list is Superposition. For this test, we have the resolution set to 1440p and both the shaders and textures set to high. Here, we see the RX 6800 take second place and trails the RTX 3080 by about 12%. It beats the RTX 2080 Ti by two frames per second. For the next test, we're still running Superposition in 1440p, but this time we have cranked up the shaders to extreme. During this workload, the RX 6800 drops to third place with the RTX 3080 leading, followed by the 2080 Ti. Next, we drop the resolution from 1440p down to 1080p and set both the shaders and textures to high. In this test, the RX 6800 Aorus Master takes third place, the RTX 3080 takes first place followed by the 2080 Ti winning by half a frame per second over the RX 6800 Aorus Master. Next, we stay with the 1080p resolution but crank up the shaders to extreme. In this test, the RX 6800 Aorus Master takes third place. The RTX 3080 takes first place, followed by the RTX 2080 Ti, this time with a bigger gap of 4 frames per second. The second benchmark tool we used by Unigine is Valley. In this test, we set the resolution to 1440p with the shaders and textures set to high. For this test, the RX 6800 Aorus Master takes third place. The RTX 3080 takes first place, followed by the RTX 2080 Ti. The interesting difference between this benchmark and the last is the big gap between the minimum and average frames per second. This shows that there is a wide gap in the minimum, average and even max frames per second observed in the test. 
For the next test, we are still running Valley in 1440p, but this time we have cranked up the shaders to extreme. During this workload, the RX 6800 comes in second place with the RTX 3080 leading. Again, we see the wide gap between the minimum and average frames per second. Next, we drop the resolution from 1440p down to 1080p and set both the shaders and textures to high. In this test, the RX 6800 Aorus Master takes fourth place. The RTX 3080 takes first place, followed by the RTX 2080 Ti in second and the RTX 3060 in third place. Next, we stay with the 1080p resolution but crank up the shaders to extreme. In this test, the RX 6800 Aorus Master takes fourth place. The RTX 3080 takes first place, followed by the RTX 2080 Ti in second and the RTX 3060 Ti in third place. The third and final benchmark by Unigine is Heaven. In this test, we set the resolution to 1440p with the shaders and textures set to high. For this test, the RX 6800 Aorus Master takes second place, the RTX 3080 takes first place. Again, we are observing similar results we saw in Valley in that the gap between minimum and average frames per second being very wide. For the next test, we're still running Heaven in 1440p, but this time we have cranked up the shaders to extreme. During this workload, the RX 6800 comes in second place with the RTX 3080 leading. We continue to observe the same pattern with the wide gap between minimum and average frames per second. Next, we drop the resolution from 1440p down to 1080p and set both the shaders and textures to high. In this test, the RX 6800 Aorus Master takes third place. The RTX 3080 takes first place followed by the RTX 2080 Ti in second. For our final Unigine Heaven benchmark, we stay with 1080p resolution but crank up the shaders to extreme. In this test, the RX 6800 Aorus Master takes third place, the RX 3080 takes first place followed by the RTX 2080 Ti. Previously did not mention that the Gigabyte RX 6800 here has a OC switch on the back here. This allows you to switch from OC to silent mode. The switch is set to the on position by default. After going through all the benchmark data we have seen that clearly the Gigabyte RX 6800 Aorus Master can really perform. In certain workloads, it was actually outperforming the RTX 3080. Although we did not cover the gaming performance in this video, I did run some additional tests in Shadow of the Tomb Raider to double check that what we saw in the 3D Mark test between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 was actually seen in an actual game. 6800 did not perform as well as it should have uh, in the DirectX 11 test and it still trailed the RTX 3080 and the RTX 2080 Ti. Having said that, Smart Access Memory is still in beta right now and uh, once it does get officially released, the performance should increase over time. Thanks for watching. If you do like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. And if there is anything in particular you would like me to further benchmark, especially in the gaming section, which I'm hoping to do in the upcoming videos, do let me know. Uh, with that, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, 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 oh,